Horta is a frequent presenter at conferences and workshops on topics related to heritage language education from a racial linguistics and culturally sustaining instructional perspective. Uh, she's currently pursuing a PhD in curricul curriculum and instruction and also Latin studies. Uh, her research focuses on the experiences of teachers of Spanish as a second language in classrooms where uh, students basically are heritage learners and second language uh, learners. Um, among other projects that she has completed, she created a three level, three years uh, Spanish heritage uh, language program at a public school in, in Kansas. And she's also a member of the Kansas City Latino Writers Collective. Uh, her work on, on, on with that group was published in two different anthologies. And her background in linguistics, uh, passion for words and poetry, and constant learning from the communities she serves is what informs her teaching practices. So Marta, welcome. Um, it's really a pleasure to have you here. So I will stop sharing my screen and you can, um, you can start with yours. Thank you so much. It's so nice to see some very um, good friends here and, and names that I recognize. And yes, um, although my, my background is linguistics and I am really a researcher and you're gonna see it through the presentation, I'm really glad, like Flavia said, that this is the topic for today because I do think that we need it more than ever because if we do not have this, um, this part of the social emotional connection with the students, nothing else matters. Um, so I teach in, high, in a high school level, and this, this presentation can really be um, re-implemented in any level because it's about the human, is recognizing the humanity of our students, uh, but in a very uh, specific way with very specific strategies. So in everything that I'm presenting right now, feel free to um, email me and I'll put my email in the, in the chat and um, email me and I will be more than glad to um, send it send it to you. So let me start my show. I used to be like the master of Zoom because I taught remote for, for a whole year. There we go. Look. So this is, um, this is, you can see the, um, my, my presentation, right? Just do a thumbs up. Yes. Okay. So um, this is it. My topic is Puentes y Espacios Post COVID 19, Building Bridges and Fostering Communities in World Language Classrooms or Heritage Language Classrooms or Classrooms in, in general. Um, I start with the land, land acknowledgement, not only because it sounds uh, pertinent and, and politically correct but because I recognize that I have a Spanish uh, background, I'm a Spaniard, I'm, a, I'm, I'm the daughter, the granddaughter, et cetera, of colonizers. And I've been a colonizer myself uh, in my heritage language classes. So I do think that this is important because everything that I say, um, I have to deconstruct a lot of my background knowledge in order to, to keep on uh, growing as a professional. And, and, and also what I was saying, recognize the humanity of my students. Um, you, you've seen, uh, well, you've heard what Flavia has said about me, that um, I come from Spain, from the Universidad de Córdoba, a multicultural city. Um, um, I'm about to read my presentation, my dissertation, hopefully in May. And um, I'm part of a variety of groups where I'm trying to grow as, a, as just a better, um, better human being, but also the rec a recognition as, a, as an immigrant and a Hispanic in the United States. Um, I think you know Jennifer Gonzalez. She's a guru for call, uh, a cult of pedagogy. And she has, um, she was talking last year about social isolation as a source of depression and anxiety and how this is so true for everybody and how we have to set time aside for social interaction. 
But during COVID, during these last two years, this social interaction has been very, very tricky. Um, it is, again, it's not just a nice thing to do, but as we have seen in the numbers of uh, students developing uh, very high levels of depression and anxiety, and um, it is essential. And I think it is essential for all teachers, for all subject matters to understand that this cannot be um, overlooked. So the title of my presentation was uh, post-COVID because I was very hopeful because I, uh, I, I did this a year ago. And then I put post in between, um, you know, it's like, maybe, maybe not. Now today, this is a map from today um, and is how the community levels, the COVID community levels are changing. So I'm a little bit more hopeful. I think, I don't know about you guys, but I'm, in Kansas, well, let's say in Johnson County, I'm a little, I'm seeing a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel um, of, um, and I'm, I'm really happy about that. So I'm gonna still keep the, the, the quotes before the quotation marks be, um, in, the, in the word post because we don't know what is at, around the, uh, the corner, but um, I, I want to refer to the fact that, that COVID and, and now war, um, has uh, created more, more instability in our lives and the lives of our, our students. Um, this, is a, this is an activity that if Flavia uh, wants, I have a couple of questions for you to start with. So this is great, right? Uh, Monday, 4.30 for me. Uh, and I'm gonna have you talk a little bit. Um, my presentation talks about how we draw bridges with our students and how we create those spaces in our classrooms. And my questions for you is, you know, how connected are you usually um, to your students or how connected are your students to you, which is different? Um, how connected were they last year? And maybe you can share a little bit what you did last year. I was remote teacher last year, so my connection was different. And then my last question, but I think this question is so important is how do you know? How do you know the connection? Some, some teachers are like, oh, I have a great relationship with my students. And my question as a, as a, a researcher is, how do you know? Uh, how can you tell? Because feelings sometimes are blurry, let's put it that way. Same with espacios. How safe is your classroom for students to, to share, to live, to, to just be comfortable? And how, how safe was last year? and how do you know? So Flavia, what do you think? Um, do you wanna do a couple of, um, do you wanna do a couple of rooms for just talk about five minutes? Say so not that no, we can feel the need of connection here. Um, wonderful, wonderful conversation in my group. And um, I love what Alegria said that She's been two years working remote and she knows that she has to be intentional. And I think that is key. And, and you're gonna find a lot of good stuff in this presentation because I taught remote one year. I'm in person now where I brought a lot of the things that I did remote um, for, connection, for, for connectivity purposes. So I'm pretty sure that you're gonna, you're gonna like this. Uh, if anybody wants to share any specific thing that you heard during your, um, your group, we can do that. Yeah, oh. So if not, I keep on going. I can only see myself. So I, you, let me put the chat on the side so I can, okay. You can also add your questions and comments to the chat. And I think that'd be, uh, that'd be great. So uh, the, the, this presentation, the name of the presentation that is so beautiful, the puentes, et cetera, it is part of my, my dissertation is, is, this is the name of it, is Unnatural Bridges, Unsafe Spaces. And if you don't know Ansaldua, you need to go and research her and get her Borderlands um, book because um, honestly, she has taught me so much about uh, recognizing the, the human being in every, every student. Um, she talks about these unnatural bridges that we create with our students, things that bridges that work for us, uh, like uh, 
unidirectional bridges, but they don't work for everybody. Um, there's unsafe spaces, spaces that look safe for us, but it's not the same for everybody. And even home can be unsafe and dangerous because a home, what we call like a familia home, you know how hard that is. And if you watch Encanto, you know the difficulties that that entails because of the vulnerability, the intimacy. So we have to be very intentional and have very good strategies to create those walls of the home. So it's a safe home, not just any home. And the bridges, uh, the bridges have some also some difficulties because not every bridge is a safe bridge. Uh, not every bridge is an, a natural bridge. So this, I, this is, this slide is my last slide too. You'll see it at the end because I just want to come to back to it because she gives a great, a great uh, perspective. This is also a picture of, uh, of of what we talk about bridges. This is the Puente Rio Bravo. Um, Take it, you know, it, first it has a variety of names. It has like five different names, which is very important. I love analogies. And as you can see, it, it connects uh, um, Juarez con el Paso. And as you can see, this, this is a bridge actually, but uh, there are some differences. There's a lot of cars coming in one direction and there's not many on the other. And we can talk about why. And I'm pretty sure that you have ideas on why. Um, why this, this bridge has a lot of traffic on one direction and not the other. So think about your own connection with your students. What, you know, who are you? Is that, are you having a lot of, a lot of connection with your students, but your students not relating to you? Or you're not, you're not really uh, hearing back from them? So I, I really like this, this analogy. This is gonna be more or less uh, uh, the contents of, we're gonna start with the, the, little, the little steps that we're gonna build this bridge and then we're gonna talk about the, the community, which is really, once we have a strong bridge, the, the community, the safe community, it builds kind of itself. So I found this very childish uh, picture of a bridge on on uh, on Google, and I loved it because it had all these names that I did not know in in English. And we're gonna start with this foundation. We, if we want a good sturdy bridge with our students, we need foundations. So foundations for me as a linguist um, is is really rooted in language. Okay, so if you know uh, Gabriel Celaya. Uh, he said, la poesía es un arma cargada de futuro. Uh, language can include and exclude language. Whatever language you use in your classroom can make students feel welcome or not welcome. And so we have to be very intentional and very careful to what we say. The first part of my foundation um, is my name. And this alegría we saw so many years ago when we met the importance of one on, on, of one uh, one's name, and it is not the pronunciation per se. I know that there are people who cannot or pronounce Marta like I pronounce Marta because they don't have my linguistic background, but I can tell when you are making an effort to say your name correctly. In my school, we have. Um, a big community of refugees from Asia, from Africa. It is difficult for me as an adult that doesn't hear some of the sounds to pronounce names, but I make an intentional effort because I know that this is my foundation. If I don't have this, other things are going to start moving. Also, the uh, share. This is how I'm starting my own bridge. I'm sharing the origin of my name. What is it? What is? What is it from? What does it mean? Do I like it? Would I like? Would I like to have another name? These things matter. And from names, then we go to a very, um, a very. I just came from. I just came from meeting with the with our superintendent about talking about pronouns in our district. How can we recognize the humanity of our students through their pronouns, their elected pronouns? And I know this is a huge issue in Texas, um, and. Um, the, the, the key here, I think, for, for me is, is just to be a, a good human being that recognizes others, uh, that normalizes their existence, 
that listens and learns with them. And I love, if you don't follow uh, Fran, uh, she's a wonderful elementary school teacher and her Twitter, uh, her Instagram is the woke Spanish teacher. She has fantastic resources for pronouns in, in, in Spanish. Um, and just based on, on basic hum, uh, humanity. So this, this, it is important for me as, as my foundation to recognize their name, their origin, and also their, their pronouns. Then we have anchors, also important if we want to study um, a sturdy, um, uh, bridge. And the, our anchors are really our positionality, like mine when I stay here in front of you, the authority that I carry. And that's why I did my land acknowledgement at the beginning. I'm a Spaniard. I come from Spain with everything that that represents in the heritage world. I'm teaching a colonizing language, which is Spanish, to students who if the history had been different, maybe would have been speaking different languages. So I just recognizing that is a big step. Um, it's a big step with their students. And you will know your students and their ages difference that you cannot talk about certain things. And maybe in, in is when you create a safe space, this this wheel of power and privilege is very very intense and is very relevant for who we are. But I do think that it's important for us as teachers to see ourselves in this mirror and because what we say matters to many students. Our impact is very, very important in many, many students. So um, these are part of the anchors in, in, in my classroom, um, languages how languages are welcome in your classroom. I used to be, again, as a Spaniard who came from Spain in 97, I used to be like, en mi clase se habla español, todos hablamos español, no se dice fierro. Uh, these things that, you know, are very prescriptivistic and very authoritative. Um, now, after 20 some years here and a lot of research and a lot of really, shame, let's put it that way, and a lot of regret and guilt, I've come to this pedagogy of translanguaging where I embrace every language. So I recognize the affective part that every language has. And so my students navigate languages the same as they navigate emotions. So that's a question that I'll have for you in a minute. Visuals in my classroom, I make sure that we have pictures of people, places that look like my students. That means that there has to be a research part and, that's, and I'm gonna show you in a minute, Dan, and that your class does not look the same every year because every year you have different students, right? So those visuals should represent your students. And then music, we do the same with, the, with music. So translanguaging, in case you're not familiar with this language, with this uh, terminology, is not code switching. Uh, translanguaging is an approach to language teaching that uh, it means that you welcome and encourage your students to use all the linguistic repertoires that they have, all of them, because that's how they are, they're holistic, a holistic person, when they can bring everything. And I tell them, you know, I'm, I'm kind of, I mean, I'm bilingual, but I'm kind of monocultural. <laughs> I am very Spanish. I come here, I eat Spanish food. I listen to Spanish music. I do, uh, so I bring that with me. And with them, I speak Spanish all the time because that's my language. But that said, it's not the reality of many of my students. So I encourage, applaud when they write, when they speak, etc. cetera. Um, yes, yes, we do essays that have to be in Spanish only because our audience is Spanish only. Uh, it's an audience that does not speak English. Yes, we do certain things in just in one language because the, our audience does not is not bi multicultural, multilingual. But this is a fantastic, this, this opens, this really opens so many doors. I think we can talk about this um, a little bit later, but if you wanna put on in, in the, if you wanna write on the chat, how will you reconcile this idea, the actual sense about the 90% target language pedagogy when I'm saying invite all languages, invite all identities or linguistic identities into your classroom? So if you have ideas, um, 
if you have ideas, make sure that you just post them there. We'll talk in a, in a minute. Um, but always, always think about this language. It's not just a set of rules and a set of words. Language have a very, very deep impact on who you are. It, is, 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 it has some effective uh, impact that I was listening to uh, Javier Bardem, the Spanish actor on a podcast last week. And he said that English is like freeing for him because it's not his language. Same with, I was started thinking, same for me. I can say a lot of things in English that doesn't have any uh, effective impact on, on myself because it's not my native language, okay? So it's important that we understand that language is, is again, it's kind of, it's a weapon. Uh, the visuals, again, same, be very, very intentional with your, with your visuals. You're not going to find certain, certain pictures on Google. If you, if you type family, you're not going to find that family. I had to go out of my way to do this because I have, um, I have Asian American kiddos in my advisory and I want them to, to see themselves and I just want them to see them as a very normal everyday thing. So I don't stop just to think, hey, look at this Asian family. I, no, it's just, it, it is a family period. The family on my right, it is a family period. We go on because I know, and again, every year my pictures change depending on my students. Uh, and I, of course, I do not refer to anybody. This is something that everybody benefits from inclusivity and from everything that is multicultural. Music, this is a very good example for music. Um, my students create their playlist in our classroom. We do a lot of writing and we do a lot of group uh, work. So they, uh, we have a form and they write at the beginning of each semester they write two songs from two groups yes this one I asked them to be in Spanish um don't ask me why <laughs> I said because a lot of the a lot of the uh, songs in English I don't even understand if they're what they're saying is appropriate or not for the class so maybe that's why so um uh, here I've learned, I have classes that is all banda, all banda, banda, banda. I didn't know anything about banda. I know so much right now. Even it shows in my favorites. My husband's like, what? Um, it, but for me, it was like rock and espanol. That's my thing of flamenco pop, but that's my music. That's the viejita mu music uh, that my students say. So this, uh, this is a very good idea to create uh, this Spotify has, you can create this playlist and then just play them. And it really warms their hearts when they, they hear their song playing and not just like the most, the greater songs. This we haven't done in a while because of COVID, but also integrating flavors uh, in our classrooms. And again, what I wanna show with this is I don't eat spicy food. I didn't eat spicy food. So my bridge of communication is not only me telling my students what, they, what we eat in Spain and the fantastic thing, or even listening to them saying how good this is. I, it's integrating, integrating a lot of the flavors, the music, the feelings in the classroom, embracing them. It's our classroom, it's not like just my classroom. Um, Another part of this bridge is, is towers, and towers talk about support system. Support system for our students um, are based on um, questions. We have to ask a lot of questions, and there are different ways of asking questions, and I'll show you it in a minute. I think this is one of my favorite parts. Um, um, ask questions. Sometimes we ask them individually, so when I was, uh, when I was a remote teacher, and um, I kind of loved it. I know it's this, a lot of people is like, no, I did because I started having a very, like I had private conversations with kids that in my classroom will never have a conversation with me. So I was like, hmm, I'm liking this Zoom thing, this Zoom chat, the, the privacy of it, the asking a question. Um, sometimes we're direct questions because sometimes we're like, um, open-ended questions and then what some some kid will write something to me and I will respond specifically to him oh so donde viste eso oh no me lo puedo creer o como se llama tu gato 
those little private little things, they made more impact than anything else that I done in the classroom. Give time also for, for those questions. And then I think this is the key one. The support system is make comments of what they say. It's, it's tough because you have to be on, on the go, right? I use, I use a, lot of, um, a lot of platforms. I used to use just the Zoom. Now I'm using Google Forms and I'll show you. And I have a whole folder with what I call chats that I can just share with you. And believe me, you're going to love it because, because there's a lot, of different, uh, a lot of different topics and the students are engaging really well with this and we're having great conversations. So I'll show you, I'll show you in a minute. Um, so last year I told you this, that my remote education, uh, Zoom, I love the private chat. And this, and for some of you who are wondering, am I really connecting with my students via Zoom? Am I, am I really? Well, this is a, this really warmed uh, my heart. Last year, one of the students, I don't know who she is. Like if I see her in the hallways, I have no idea. Uh, I have never seen her. Her, her camera was always black, but um, she went back in person and I remain a remote teacher. So she emailed me saying that she was gonna miss me so much. And that made me feel like that was so, that was so, well, it was cute, but at the same time, reaffirming that, yes, we can make those connections online. Yes, it, it, they, they look different, but yes, we can make them, we can make them online. And Alegria was talking about the use of Bitmojis and use of, yeah, we have to learn their language in order to communicate with, with our students. Um, in my Zoom, for example, at the beginning, um, I always started with something like this last year. Um, they, for example, you know how in Zoom you can put a star here and there and you can draw stuff. So I started, for example, the beginning of the year and then they just put it um, like a star, whatever they wanted in uh, here. And then in the chat, they could write so everybody can see it or so I, only me can see it. Why? Why? Do you, so if I put my star next to the very sad question, why? And you see that little by little, this doesn't happen out of the blues. Like this doesn't happen in September. This is something in January. So it just, after six weeks of doing a lot of this work, you can see that you're building trust and then you have to keep that trust. That trust comes and goes. Um, so we talked about, you know, it, this was January last year. So it was the inauguration of, of Biden and Harris. What do you expect? This is, these are like current events. Okay. I I bring to the classroom things that happen in the world and we make connections every, every week. So this is not that I was just, I just wanted them to be very excited about this administration. This was like, had it been another one, I had it too. So my students get used to these current events and doing connections, personal connections, what happens. So now this year, this year we do it differently. We do it through, and I'll show you through these Google Forms, okay? Um, the important is not the platform per se, but what it matters is the topics. And my advice to you, if you wanna connect with your students, um, you can look at all the chats that I've done and I'll, when I call chats are these forms and I'll send them to you. Make sure you change them. You change them to things that matter to them. Um, local things that happened like yesterday. And again, yes, it takes time, but it is, it is the best thing you can do for your students. In my school, we're having issues with tardy tables. Kids are late. So we, we had our administrators decided to act the punishment, whatever. So uh, instead of just sitting here, like being here and ask my students, they answer, they answer on this, on these forms. And then we take a look at the results. We are actual, um, so these are some of, these are some of the different, um, chats that I have with my students. And you'll see these were mis planes del principio de año, los sueños, que sueños tienes. Um, ahora estamos herencia afro, afro, afro latina, etc. Chat con la maestra. 
So all this I can send to, to you. These are different topics that we have. But then we, what matters to me as a researcher that is very, very important is this. We analyze things together. We put things together. We analyze them together. So we see the results. And I don't give them anything that somebody has written in private, but I give them this data. And, and you know what? It is amazing because then it's like, hey, you know that half and half, more or less, if the class think that arriving late to, to class is a problem and half of them they don't think so what do you think and then we start talking and that's I think that that has a lot of value in this in this um in in this conversation we I do a lot of polling about my students why what do you like this what do you don't and then we analyze that too we have um virtual conversations on Flipgrid more last year and remote uh, being able to see their faces because I do I did um, honor their um, their will not to uh, switch on their cameras and I think that's important that they don't have to but then this was very nice when they did we could do conversations on Flipgrid because you can actually answer with a video to their to their questions um, I do like um, Alegria was talking to, we do journals every week and we have, um, I said, I, in, in, my, in my district, uh, we launched a, a whole system of three levels of Spanish. So this, um, this, I have cuadernos de escritura for you if you guys want them with a lot of prompts. And again, I, I will encourage you to change the, some of the wording that uh, affects your age level and then where, wherever you are. But my students write a lot. And when they write, um, you'll see the, you see the, the, the next step after the, the write. What happens after all these questions? This is what we get, we're getting with the deck. What happens, what happens um, with all this? And this is what I'm most proud of. Um, I create a log. I tell you, I'm a researcher. Uh, sometimes when we ask, how do you know? When we ask at the beginning, well, I know because my students come talk to me and I will, I will say, all your students come talk to you? Which students come talk to you? How do you, you know, there's so many questions there because I, I have a feeling that they trust me. Well, where is that? It may, they may, you know, they may very well trust you, but we're missing out. So I create a, a log like this, and I'll show you how how I categorize this information with the um, so with the forms that I have, and I ask a lot of questions. For example, what do you think about tardies? And then sometimes they they email me or they put in the form. They say, hey, I'm tardy because my mom gets out late because she works till time. So I I start writing like the red flags, but also the the very nice things that they do, what they want to do when they go to college. Just the, so both things. I don't want to have that deficit view that, oh, let me find all the problems in my students. Also the very good things, okay, what they love to do, what they want to do, if they work, etc. And then I do categorize their, <laughs> their, their information just because I'm just a nerd, uh, but you don't have to do that. Um, but this is this is key. Uh, this log allows me to avoid blind spots. The kids who are nice kids never talk, never. But there they are kids who they need us the, the most. And now the kids who are more isolated, the kids who will not just just misbehave in class. So when I look at my I look at this, and this is very easy to do. I mean, you can start with just a just a piece of paper with their names and they just start putting some information and then add it to just an Excel, just little pieces of information. I mean, this, this takes time. And then I see, you know, man, you see a student F doesn't have anything. I, I, I missed out on this kid. I only know he has migraines. I can make a whole story in my mind why I don't have anything else. Maybe he didn't write anything important. Maybe he didn't write anymore. So what did, what, how does that matter to me? And then when I go to any meetings about these students, I'm very prepared. I know those students. I know things that other people don't and they're private. I don't tell, but I act um, accordingly. 
this was based on um, this um, this instructional pra practice by David Stewart uh, Jr. It's called Moments of Genuine Connection. And if you want um, uh, in cult of pedagogy, they have a they have an interview with him, and he does it mu much more uh, in a very uh, rudimentary way, just with a clipboard, and then just he just takes notes. I added the <laughs> I added the Excel and all of that because I like it, but you can do it in any way you want. And um, this is this is part of the 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 impact. You know, when you use a log, you connect fast with the students. What he does, he actually goes and talks to students for like a minute or so during the class, and then he 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 writes something. I I really lear I learned this from remote. I really like for them to do it online because they are very very open and they learn to trust you. Um, so. Now with the cables, let me tell you what I do with this information, how I connect my bridge. So I have this information, I put it all together and I keep on putting it all together. This information is very fluid. What do I do? Well, um, I let them know that their voices matter, that their their stories matter. And how, how do I do that? Because if that's information, you know, because you've taken surveys that don't go anywhere. And then next time, next time you take a survey, it's like, oh, really? But this, for this, that's why it's very important. I give feedback as much as I can. And I started last year doing uh, voice feedback because I, because, well, I researched that uh, voice feedback, audio feedback has a, a better impact on your, on your students. And also because that's all we knew of each other was our voices sometimes. So I started using that, and this is this is uh, an article that I can send you, but it is uh, it's about nurses. But I'm starting to use, uh, I like this one, mode, uh, voice notes. notes. Uh, it is free up to certain amount of time that I have passed, so, but it's not very expensive. But you can, like, I, I put some of my voice notes to some of the students, hey, Ah, me encantó lo que hiciste aquí. ¿Por qué no me dices no sé qué? O, oh, oye, estoy esperando que in those voice notes, they're also very cultural. We do a lot of, like, uh, on the phone. My, my kids hate it. It's like, mommy, do you know that nobody listens to your voice notes? I'm like, yes, they, you guys do. Um, so it's, it's important. Also, another way for me uh, establishing those cables is when they write their journals, if you are Spanish teachers, you're going to see a lot of mistakes or some mistakes here. I don't go for those. Maybe one. I go for the content and then I connect and then I write something related to that. That's how I'm establishing those cables. Hey, you know, I, I see what you say when I was when I was your age in my house. Also, oh, I've read, you know, something that is that it, that connects and this, this is the way to create those safe spaces. There's a lot of vulnerability. There is a lot of one-on-one -on -one information. Um, there is a lot of um, intentionality. This doesn't happen just because. This constant asking questions and establishing connection has have to be that constant, not just a thing of one day. Um, so we can create this these communities where their background matters, their experiences matters. Like, you know, when we talk about culturally sustaining pedagogies, not only culturally who you are, but what experiences you had. Also those moments of genuine connection, they matter because they're unique to that, that student and you. And then the feedback part um, matters. So again, going back to, to my last slide, which is this one. If you want to create some uh, more natural bridges, make sure that um, that you engage in this. You know, it's 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 work, it, but it is very rewarding, and it is a very good foundation for that bridge and for that safe space, safe community that we want our classes to to feel like. <laughs>